Hello everyone, and welcome back to Wild Endeavor, episode 3. I'm Ooh. Sean Luke. How are Hello. you doing, buddy? I'm doing good! We made it to a third episode, can you believe it? Yeah, that's wow. crazy. Wow. <laughs> well, that's where we say that like every like... episode. Yeah, no, I mean, wow, another episode. That's like an achievement for us, you know. We're I mean, not... To be fair, there is like a month's gap between this one. Um... Yeah, but like, <laughs> that's, that's, that's quick. That's quick turnaround for the Wild Never podcast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how are you doing, buddy? I'm all good. I'm all right. Um, you know, obviously there's been a bit of Doggy Who news to. Has there? Rip, I haven't noticed. Stick my teeth into, so that's been fun. But uh, yeah, no, outside of that, it's been fine. I, I don't know what Doctor Who is. Got no idea. Never heard of it. <laughs> Well, it, it started, started back it, in 1963 with I this old I think you'll teaser. find it started this year because it's season one. Wow. Uh, actually, it's a brand new show. It was never seen before this. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I'm doing pretty good, obviously. It's kind of interesting because, for, obviously, you mentioned the month's gap. I felt for a long time Doctor Who news was kind of dead. And oh, you, yeah. that's reflected on the main channel as well, and it's yeah, it goes double for something like this. Where I'm like, what do I talk about today? Uh, we have know, just like, kind of gotten everything at once. Yeah, that was the thing. Like these last few weeks, you had like Moffat returning, new trailer, new time scheduling and release date scheduling, and all that sort of stuff. Um, all of like Disney's involvement, just all sort of happening in like one clump of a few days. Yeah. Uh, after like about two months of pretty much, pretty much a lot of dead air, really. Like there was stuff going on for us personally, but um, mm. as in like stuff uh, that makes it sound more ominous than I intended. <laughs> also, just like you know, we we did things. Uh, yeah, we but, did do like, things. <laughs> but like on the Doctor Who end, officially, it was a bit dead for a while, mm. and now it's it's kicked into high gear again, which I'm I'm happy about. Yeah, it always is. I reasons. feel like over the next week month and a bit, it's just going to be constant, like, boom, 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 thing, 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 which I'm really excited yeah, for. Def definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah. Especially with Disney behind it. Definitely, <laughs> yeah. But before we got to all of that, before we got to a trailer, before we got to the new Disney release schedule and all the discourse that surrounded that, we went to Comic-Con, didn't we? We went to, yeah. um, we went to London Comic-Con. It was my second time at uh, London Film and Comic-Con. Yeah, right? after your first one was meeting Matt Smith. <laughs> Because obviously anyone who follows me knows that story. Um, this went a little bit there. Still a few hiccups, this but one, a little bit there. There was, there was a few hiccups, <laughs> but I made it back alive. Um, the good thing this time was we actually travelled up together. We yeah. were considering doing an in-person Wild and Never. We were going to. I think time just got away from us to be completely Yeah, because we were exhausted on the uh, last day. Like, Because yeah. I think we had done town the first day, so we were out all day. Then we had Comic-Con, mm. getting up at like... Some like six, half six in the morning yeah, to yeah, travel down the train to London. Was quarter past seven. It was seven. rough. Um, yeah, because we wanted to. I wanted to make sure we were there, like for <laughs> relatively close to opening, because I know what it's like. Once that's once that con gets busy, it's just impossible yeah. <laughs> to navigate. So, and I actually did kind of like getting there a bit earlier because it sort of meant you had like an hour or so before the con got really, really yeah. busy. You know that you could actually see some things before just the hordes came in. Um. But yeah, no, so we travelled up together, which made it a lot easier on my end, because, you know, navigating London, for me, is just a nightmare, <laughs> so it was good to have someone else there. Uh, yeah, it went smoother. We went into Paddington, and uh, I was going to mention this as well, because obviously, you know, we got a taxi on the way out, but uh, our taxi driver asked oh, where yeah. we were going, and uh, I said, oh, it's the Olympia, and he was like, oh, what's on at the Olympia then? Bear in mind, very heavy Cockney accent. Um, and he's like, what's on at the Olympia then? And I go, oh, a convention. Uh, we're into, like, nerd stuff. And he goes, oh, what sort of nerd stuff? And I say, oh, Doctor Who. And he goes, oh, I remember Doctor Who back in the Tom Baker days. Didn't he but say, better. I remember Doctor Who. I remember when it was good. Yeah, yeah. In the Tom Baker days, much better than that shit they have on now. Yeah. We were just sort of sat there, like, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> very awkwardly. Um, and he he asked who the new doctor was, and I said, "Oh, it's it's Shooty Gatwa." And he went, "That doesn't sound like an English name." And uh, we sort of got dangerously close to Brexit conversation, but I managed yeah. to steer away from it. I was just sort of uh, sold out. Like I was just sort of like, "I'm not. I'm just not going to speak to him. Just just look down at the floor." The thing is, like, 
Barry's has already started engaging. So I couldn't not respond. Yeah. It'd just be rude. <laughs> exactly. So I felt like, like it's fine. He's he's taken the hit here. Yeah. Yeah, you let me go into the line of fire. <laughs> um so yeah, that was fun. Getting like a you know, NMD <laughs> taxi driver. <laughs> if that's the I don't know. I probably it's probably inaccurate to say that because he probably doesn't care much. He's probably just like, you know. Probably just reads what's in the paper and like. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, but like it was, it was, it was a tone setter. It was a, t- it was a t- it sure was a mood at the start of the, at the start of the convention. Um, obviously, I, I just, even as soon as we went in, someone said hello to me, which was kind of like, oh, it was before yeah. we even. It was like you had literally just yeah. come through the door and you were stopped. And like whenever I talk about this, I always feel like such a twat because I'm always like, oh, you know, people people say hello to me. It's, it's such a thing. But like, I kid you not, like you can attest it was literally as you were saying. Not even we weren't even in the main convention pit. No, we'd literally gone to get to the ticket booth, and someone was saying hello. Um, so yeah, and uh, no, yeah, it was like every like twenty minutes, someone new would stop here. Yeah, which was which was fun. I mean, luckily this time I managed to get one of their accessibility passes. Which meant that we actually did get to skip some of the queues, which was good. And I got a, f- a few um, free falls. Yeah, yeah, that you scammed them. I don't know whether we should should we say that. I'm never getting a, like an access pass again if we if we say that. I mean, I might as well say like basically because because you went in the photo box with me, obviously. Well, the uh, thing is, right. To be fair, I had already bought a ticket for yeah, Billy yeah. Paper already to get my photo. Yeah, but because I went in with you as your carer, like. They didn't scan my ticket because they just assumed that well I was with him yeah. to look after him. So yeah, Pro tip, if you're if you're disabled, they'll do a lot of assuming that you can just do things anyway. Yeah, so, uh, so I, just, I some... had like a spare ticket yeah. and I just give it to a friend. I say, you know, I think I think you're just making up for the other disadvantages you always have <laughs> when you go to these events. Like as I said, travel being a prime example. <laughs> um, so like the big thing for me was obviously. The main reason I wanted to go was was to meet Ruth. That was the main yeah. the main attraction for me. That was what pushed me over the edge for it. Uh, and then Billy Piper, I think, got announced after. That? Yeah, yeah, I think after. so. Because I know you were omening and ring over what day you were going to go on. Yeah, and so then because like guests, that was the thing, I think, a lot on the of Sunday, the, but then yeah, a lot of the Doctor Who guests Billy. were the Sunday. Yeah, but Ruth Madley was Saturday, and I was like, I can't miss Ruth because obviously, if I <laughs> travel up, I'm only going to travel up for one day because trying to stay in a hotel is a nightmare. And, Etc. Yeah. Etc. Etc. Not to mention, blooming expensive to get a hotel oh, yeah. in London, even if that was like viable. Like it's insane. Um, so like, yeah, I had to pick like Saturday or Sunday, and like Ruth was going on the Saturday. I really wanted to do Ruth, but you had like Jacqueline King, Sean Temple, uh, the guy who plays Sean Temple, Noble, uh, Carl Collins. That's the one. Carl yeah. Collins um, and a few others all going on the Sunday. Like a lot of them were going on the Sunday. But then they announced Billy Piper for Saturday. I was like, okay, that's, you know, that's made me feel confident in my decision. Uh, and Anita Dobson was there as well. Oh, yeah. So that was cool. Yeah. Her line was massive. I was quite surprised, actually, by, like, how big her queue was for, like, her autographs at the start of the day. I think there it's because, well, she's, you know, she's been in, like, a few things. Yeah, she's quite an established actor, isn't she? Because, mm-hmm. obviously, EastEnders is, like, her big thing. Even when I was telling my mum who she was, she was like, oh... <laughs> Dirty Dan or whatever it what whatever it is, I, I I don't know much about it, but like Well yeah, wasn't it like uh, wasn't she in what like the most watched episode of yes, EastEnders yeah. or something? My mum remembers that episode. So uh yeah. It it has a big <laughs> cultural impact. Obviously it's kind of lost on me as someone who, you know, didn't really like watch soaps and it's it's even even if I did, it's soaps from like the eighties. So, you know, it's yeah. not it's, it's before my time slightly. But uh yeah, she had massive cues and she was lovely as well. Uh, really nice. She had kind of a Katie Manning esque vibe to her, where she was quite like a cheeky esque sort of yeah. presence. Apparently, she was like kissing people on the cheek and stuff like that, <laughs> uh, which is quite funny. Um, but yeah, the main reason I wanted to go was for Ruth, and obviously, you know, I, I told well, I've told most of the story of the Therese rant before to give you like the brief, you know, recontextualization. Obviously. I went to the Star Beast premiere a couple of days early, thanks to uh, the Royal Television Society in, in Wales. They had like a, a preview screening and um, met Russell there after the screening. And he said, 
going to be things in the next few episodes that you really like. And he sort of told me, like, uh, there's going to be a ramp in the TARDIS, and you were the one who basically inspired it, because you said in one of your videos that, oh, as a kid, I always wondered whether I'd be able to get on board the TARDIS. And so he heard that and added in a ramp, and Ruth Madley did confirm to me that it is referred to on set as the fairy's ramp. That's insane. Which was kind of mad. Yeah. Uh, it, you can't see it properly, but you see that picture there, the the one of the Star Beast. Oh, uh, yeah. David and Ruth, that's where the fairy's ramp is signed. She did spell fairies wrong, in fairness, but it's fine. I don't mind. <laughs> uh, she just missed the E, but it's fine. I, I don't hold it against her. Um, it's funny because at first I just said my name like Tom and then um, mm-hmm. I mentioned the interview because I did the interview for BBC Sounds and she went oh fairies and I was like yep yeah. that's me uh, just her, then, her whole face lit up as soon as you said that she was like oh my yeah. god you're fairies and she was like can I give you yeah. a hug yeah, so she awesome. was she, she, I have to say she was absolutely lovely like one of the most down to earth genuine people I've probably yeah. ever met at a con obviously Everyone I've ever met at a con has been nice, but there's something so, like, I don't know, she was just so, like, just, like, a normal person completely, you yeah, know what I mean? You know what yeah. I mean? There was no, there was no, like, filter in that no. sense. She just felt like a normal person. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, absolutely, like, that That made my day, that did, that made my week, <laughs> that made my month, my year, yeah. you know, that was, that was worth the price of admission alone for me personally. Uh, everything else we did that day was kind of cherry on the top. Obviously, uh, Billy Piper, uh, that was good. Uh, again, with with a lot of these things, when you take pictures, you know, if you've been to a column, like, it's like, hi, she, and, yeah, you know, so it's just like, you're in and out. They sort of try and move the yeah, so along as quick as they can. As, as many, like, anecdotes to say for many of the others, because it was more just, because for the most part, I did pictures. I did get something signed by Anita Dobson. And she was yeah. nice. Uh, I don't really remember what we spoke about, to be honest. I think it was just sort of, you know, <laughs> polite small talk, you know. Uh, how's your day going? Or how's the you know, weather? And that sort of thing, you know. <laughs> I um, was too poor to get, like, any autographs, unfortunately. I really well, yeah, regret well, missing him with me. Yeah, well, you kept abandoning me, so side note. Oh, I was off simping. You were, you were. So I don't know how much you want to go into this on the World of Devon podcast or not. Uh, <laughs> but uh, what, what do you mean? What do you mean, buddy? I was just off with my little little group of friends doing things. Yeah, basically, he had a shall we say special friend that uh, that you know he he is good friends with, should we say? And um, he was happy to see her, and uh, he. He ditched me a few times. I didn't and, uh, ditch you. The thing is, right, you were uh, stuck in that little bit with that Jack figure that you almost stole. That was funny, yeah. So <laughs> I probably should give context to that before it sounds like I robbed a stall. Um, so obviously when you're at the stalls, there was like this guy who owned like a row of four of them. They were like big stalls. Yeah. And I couldn't find where the guy was. Yeah, because his desk so was like up, all the way at the other, like his little bit, like booth was so I there. So like, this little... It just kept going. I picked up this little cat and jack, which you can see over there, because I didn't actually have a jack to complete oh, my yeah. sort of series three. Little, series three shelf. Series three shelf going on over there. Also, I, you can notice I put up some of the new ones. I'll talk about that in a second. Nice. Um, but yeah, so I just found this like cat and jack in a bag for like ten quid, and I was like, "Yep, yeah, all right, <laughs> I'll grab that." Um, and then I just couldn't find the guy. <laughs> But I was just sort of sat there. Yeah. Waiting and then, like, people came over money. to talk to you, and like you'd sort of yeah. like drifted away from the stall. Like, you were yeah, in the like, middle uh, of the con. I was like, I can't just, I can't just leave the stall. I've got to like, I've got to. You probably you know, could have just it. like taken it, and no one would have cared. Obviously, stealing is wrong. Don't but steal. I, but I'm a good guy. I was going to yeah. pay that man <laughs> what what he was owed. You know, I, I don't I, know. So when we took guy. it home and opened it, for some reason, the figure was filthy. It was. Fu- it, like was it was covered in so much grain, was, and I was like, what, why? It was a bit, gr- it was a bit grim. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of <laughs> wish I had just taken it down. No, I had to, like, wash um, it. I had to, like, wipe it down. Yeah, wet, like. yeah, because you came back with, yes, I remember, yeah. It looks okay now. It washed out fine. Yeah, but, yeah. Like, yeah, it was a bit grim. Um, <laughs> and there was another stand of character options and, like, figures that I absolutely, like, fell in love with. All the obscure ones. And, uh, yeah, the newest edition is the Paradigm Dalek. And yeah. Smith figure. <laughs> the series five Weeping Angel was from Telford. I just haven't put it up till now. 
Uh, nice. But I put I put the Smith with the Angel because it's got the the jacket that the Angel stole in that episode. So I was like, that they go together. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, I can't actually remember if I did buy anything at that con. I don't think I did. Um, but I could be oh, I also I bought two posters that are now in my office. Uh, not office, sorry, bedroom. bedroom. Well, wrong words. Uh, well, one again? of them being the main shooty promotional, the one of him doing the... Um, oh, one of him, yeah, like, like, like reaching the, out his, yeah, the reaching hand, out his hand. On the um, colorful background. Yeah, the like, little vortex yeah. spinny background. Those of you who... You know what I'm talking about. Uh, maybe you can put a picture up on screen. The other one is... Oh, yeah, wasn't the other one you got? The one of all the doctors? Like, yeah. All the, yeah. I forget the artist's the name. Friend. Yes, Rap- that's the word, yeah. Something like that. Yeah, I, Rapsky, I saw it on yeah, my wall as well. <laughs> yeah, really no, like it's, it. it's, a, it's a really, really nice one of all the Doctors, including, like, Fugitive and Wall. <laughs> but it's, like, done in a really nice way where, like, some of the other incarnations, like Shards of Glass. Yeah. And then you've got, like, the cool, like, I guess, New Who ones in the centre, obviously. Uh, really, really nice piece of art. Um, so I was like, yeah. I'll put that in my bedroom for some more decoration because my bedroom was looking a little bit depressing. So I was <laughs> like, I'm going to put a couple of... Because I put, like, most things for decorative purposes in here because I like it to look, you know, nice and yeah. vibrant to look at when you're, like, on camera. And I think it does look good, but yeah. Um, yeah, so, so that's what I bought. And a donut, to be fair. The donuts were amazing. Side note... <laughs> The donuts were incredible. I wish I'd got I, one, you, though, because I know like, you, you, came, oh. you came over to me with this incredible donut. And I was like... Bro. It was amazing. I, it was like cookies and cream. It was like a cake. It was incredible. Uh, you want to die afterwards like, while you're it, so. No, actually. I was fine. <laughs> I yeah. needed it, though, because like, I needed the sugar boost, because we were there mm. from, like, you know, like 10, 11-ish to, like, yeah. 6. So it was quite, we like... We for, like, two and a bit hours as well. I'm trying to think if anything else happened of like major note that I need to make note of. Did anything happen with you that was like major or not really? I mean, um, spoke to Colin for a bit, like just with the group yeah, that I missed... was with when you weren't there. Um, you missed Ruth, didn't you? I did miss Ruth. I was really sad about that. The thing is, you just mentioned yeah. me being like, "You're going to miss Ruth, mate." I was like, "Okay." So I went to find you, and they're like, "Oh, I've already been." And I was like. What do you mean? Well, what yeah, did you tell well, me before? You, because you left me, bro. It's your fault. You should have messaged me you, before. You should be like, you rest in five minutes. Well, Where are you? I didn't have time because I was <laughs> going in, bro. If you hadn't put gals before pals, you'd have been at the Ruth Medley to the Ruth Medley photo op. <laughs> but you weren't. Mm. Because you abandoned me. No. Um, abandoned and unknown. I was the timeless fairies. The um, unknown. <laughs> it's the un- oh, what are we doing man? dead meme dead yeah, meme dead it's meme. over um, and the only other thing I can think to mention is like you wanted to go to the BFI and I was like no no what it was right is the BFI was running on the same day and we had a mate which that is was annoying with us. in and of itself to be fair that's annoying in and of itself that they yeah. We had a mate here that was, like, with us at the con. We had, like, two, three hours or something after the con. Uh, Well, (laughs) Well, yeah, we had him on the last, like, Comic-Con episode, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, like, three billion years ago. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So, yeah, he he was already going to the BFI afterwards, and I was like, it makes sense with the amount of time we have to kill if we just go there, spend, like, an hour there, and then I'm pretty sure it was just, like, five minutes from there to our train station. But mm. Fairies, being the smart guy that he was, faked being ill. He was like, oh, I'm dying. I didn't fake, no. Yeah, no, yeah, you did, you right. I'm doing ill. No, that burger did. Okay, right. So he stopped at McDonald's, <laughs> okay? And uh, I was needed to eat something, so I got a burger, and I was eating it, and I got, like, two bites in, and I just wasn't feeling right, bro. And I'm not even kidding when I said, like, I wasn't feeling right. Uh, I barely finished it off, didn't eat any of the fries. Um, mm. And I fucking love my food, so it was a bit of a... I'm never like that normally. Um, I was feeling a bit weird, and then I, I perked up later on, but by the time we'd done that, uh, it was yeah. sort of a case of, well... Let's... Well, the thing is, Will had, Will had already left at that point, right? So we were just sort of stuck. Um, where Earl's Court, that's where we were. It was by the yeah. post box. We were just sort of stuck by Earl's Court. And, like, we didn't know what way to go on the trains. 
Like, that was sort of banking on Will, because I was like, oh, if we're going here, because we would have just left from Comic-Con originally, but we trekked down to Earl's Court. So that kind of mm. screwed up the plans of like, okay, well, if we're not going there now, what do we do? Um, yeah. So we couldn't really find the actual train we were meant to get, at least one that wasn't like, um, ex- you know, one that was accessible to you, of course. Mm, yeah. And well, then, uh, fair, and then we I walked out and say, it, was like, it was just impossible it, to find a taxi. Like we were waiting for an hour. Us, given <laughs> how long it took us to get a taxi. Yeah. Like, obviously, I know we could have gone to to the BFI, but I mean, I still think we'd have been cut and get fired even if we. No, we'd we have wouldn't gone. also because the train took like quarter of the time that we were waiting for the taxi. Yes, but you've also got to consider <laughs> the fact that like. And then it's five minutes from there. The thing is, we already we had time when we got to Paddington. Mm. Anyway, like we that had like true. forty minutes. That is true. I just didn't want to get stuck, alright? I had PTSD. I was like, <laughs> maybe like next time, now that I know we get back with time, I'd hmm. be fine. I think it was more just... Yeah, I, I knew where it was coming from. It made sense. Stuck. So I was like, I'm not deviating <laughs> from the path. We're going one just like, come on. Um, otherwise, um, I, think if, I think if the like what had happened first time had not happened, I probably would have. To be fair as well, yeah. I genuinely was a bit like sensory overload, so I was like, the last thing I want to do is go into a room of no offense, BFI people. I go to the BFI <laughs> myself, but like loud and hot Doctor Who. I agree with that. I agree with that. But I feel like afterwards, so you could have just sat in the lounge, and that would have been better than standing in the cold Probably. for an hour. But <laughs> the past is the past. It happened, but we had yeah, a good. We got time back. Overall. We went into the Paddington Bear Shop. We did. <laughs> it was we a bit mid. That. It was. It was a bit underwhelming. I was expecting. I don't know what I was expecting, but actually, yeah, it wasn't it? It was impossible, like on the way back, for you to get like a ramp to go on the train. That was another thing as well. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. Like, there's always something <laughs> that just happens. Yeah. Because um, you had like that woman that like looked out for you when you we were first going to the train, who like shouted mm-hmm. everyone out of the way. Yeah. Some people. The thing is with <laughs> public transport and being in a wheelchair, some people are really good and really on it, and mm-hmm. then others. It's not because, like, they don't want to help. It's just they're not used to having to do it. Yeah. So they're just sort of, like, they just don't really know what to do with you. So they're sort of like, uh. Yeah. Like, the amount of times I have heard the exact phrase going on trains and stuff, I've never had to use the ramp before. Yeah. But well, yeah, well, weren't the two people, people that actually got the ramp out for you, they were like, we shouldn't actually be doing this. Yeah. But no, they weren't actually right. the ones who were supposed to get the ramp. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, that's not their job. So, like, yeah. Public tra- in conclusion, if you thought public transport in the UK <laughs> was bad, normally, with a disability, it's about five times less convenient. Surely uh, there should be basic it... training for every like staff member on the train, because it's such well, a basic it's thing, really. really. It's literally yeah. just getting a ramp and putting it down in these yeah, little clamps. clipping things. it into place. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's wild. But I think that's why I was so conscious of time going back. Yeah. I'm, like, I just, I'm used to that sort of thing <laughs> happening. So, um, but I think if we went to London again, I probably would. It, assuming there was a BFI. MCM, also, baby. Yeah, I have <laughs> thought about it. Um, I just haven't been to that in London, so maybe. We'll see. But uh, I think that concludes Comic-Con. So that was pretty much all of Comic-Con, yeah. Yeah, like, I didn't do a full video on it on the Therese channel in the end, because I, like, whilst the Roost stuff was cool, like, that was the only thing I could really... I think you were going to, but you felt really ill, didn't you? There was that as well, yeah. (laughs) Shortly after you left, I I felt really ill, uh, which was annoying. Um, But yeah, no, I mean, I think, to be honest with you, though, I think it works better talking about cons in this format anyway, because, like... I don't know, I I quite like the con videos you make. No, I do as well. I think it's just... Because you were there as well, yeah. it offers more than one perspective, and I think it gives, like, you know, more insight than just me saying mm-hmm. what happened from my perspective, I guess. Um, but, uh, moving on slightly, should we talk a bit about... Should we talk about the release thing first? Yeah. Because that yeah. is what happened. The controversial chrono- release. chronological order. Alright, so uh, it got announced... When did it get announced? <laughs> Was it last week? A few days ago? I've lost all track of time. It was around that. Recently... It got announced that uh, Doctor Who is going to be having a double premiere uh, on the 11th of May 
uh, but it will be launching at midnight on BBC iPlayer, and then that will be subsequently followed up by a broadcast. This is UK now, in the UK on yeah. BBC One uh, around the usual time of like seven o'clock or whatever it is. Um, and this is this was a controversial decision, um, yep. and one that I personally like. I'm still not a huge fan of. Uh, I've you know I'm, I've come. Calmed down a lot about it since it got announced. <laughs> it's sort of like we've accepted um, it, but we're not happy about it. Yeah, I mean, I'll be completely <laughs> honest. The main reasons I don't like it, and I said this on the Who's There podcast. Depending on which one goes out first, you'll you'll see me say it. Mm. But like, uh, like my reasons for disliking it are purely the selfish ones. <laughs> to yeah. be completely honest with you, it's a case of like. Okay, so the, the episode's going to come out at midnight, and then you're going to do a double premiere that's not going to end until 2am. There's no way I'm recording after 2am <laughs> and releasing yeah. videos at, like, 3am. No, A, that's going to be AIDS and terrible to do. And B, no one's going to want to watch me talk about Doctor Who at 3am. Yeah. Like, as, as I have a majority UK audience. Uh, even though I do have people in America and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. The bulk of my audience, because it is a Doctor YouTube channel, mm-hmm. is still like 40% UK. And I've tried putting out videos to align with, you know, American times in like, late at night and stuff, and it just, they always just, you know, yeah. because cause the cause the British audience just aren't online for it. So, from a YouTube end, it's kind of a pain. Um, and I mean, also beyond that, like, I think just irritating from a spoiler angle of things, isn't it? It's just yeah, a bit like... sort of like what I find annoying about Do- about it is that I either have to watch Doctor Who either at midnight or first thing when I wake up, and I'll yeah. be honest, I don't really want to be watching Doctor Who, you know, with grit in my eyes, you know, <laughs> yawning, yeah. being like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just not. I don't know. It's just not. The vibe is off. I think I think my main thing, though, is like, you know, I don't like the argument that a lot of people are saying is just stay off social media if you don't want to be spoiled. Come on, bro, it's 2024 as well. Like, yeah, in like, the day we're living, it's like, I shouldn't have to stay off social media to avoid spoilers. I think there's also an aspect of, it's not just social media, <laughs> is it? Because if you go on, like, Google's homepage, if you've got, yeah. you've got it on phone, it'll come up with articles based on Doctor Who and stuff. So it's not even just social media, it's pretty much just <laughs> the internet. That's what like, I mean, I, just, I feel bad for people that have work, that it's like, they can't stay yeah. up. They then, you know, they obviously can't watch it first thing in the morning because they're leaving early, going to work all yeah. day, right? So they can't even check, like, Twitter on, like, their lunch break or whatever, you know? It's yeah, like, I think it's another, like, demographic that's kind of got lost in this debate as well, I brought it up on, uh, when, again, when I guessed it on, who's <laughs> there, is... Like, it's not just Britain that is affected by no, this. No, no. I've Britain... noticed people say that they're prioritising the rest of the world, whereas they're kind of yeah. not, because it's all of Europe is being... In fact, the, yes. most of Europe outside of the UK is being shafted more than the UK, because they're yeah. like an hour ahead of us. The UK is the most vocal, because the UK you know, audience is... Because it's our show, audience. yeah, we pay yeah. the licence fee. <laughs> but there, there is an element of that, right? There is an element of okay, we've paid for it for, like, the last 60 years, you know, mm. yeah, I get I get that, to a degree. I'm not, I, I want to stress this now, I am not, like, I'm not a nationalist in any sort of sense of the word. Um, I complain about the UK constantly, that's part of our national character. But, I can understand why, from certain people's perspective, you're like, right, so... We paid for it all this time, and then the, they get the cushy 7 p.m. time slot, and we get midnight. I can understand why it's a bit frustrating, and yeah. I do, I do sympathise with that. Obviously, I'm not, you know, I'm not, um, I'm not as annoyed by it now. And I think a reason I'm not as annoyed by it is because I think looking at how well the promotion for Doctor Who's been doing recently, mm. I think it's one of those things where. It's like a not a worthy sacrifice, but you sort of get what I'm getting at. Like the ends yeah, sort of justify yeah. the means kind of. It's deal. weird because I honestly think, and I feel like this is more controversial to say, I'm kind of more against the two episode drop than I am the actual. Time I've seen thing. a lot of people say that. Yeah, I, actually, I think you know what. Don't mind that that much, but um, I don't know. Though I think it's one week less of like the show going out. I think that's one week less, less of hype. Yeah. It's also if. 
again, coming back to the time thing, it's like, if I did want to watch those episodes when mm. they aired, it was like, I would be going to bed at like 2 a.m. Yeah, no, that's that's the annoying thing, I think, for that. Yeah, I think definitely. also as a content creator from your end, it's like, okay, well, oh, yeah. you have to do <laughs> two episodes. Yeah, I'm not sure how I'm going to square that yet. I don't know how other YouTubers are going to do it, but like, uh, again, I have I might end up bundling them both in. But the weird thing with that is, the two first episodes, from what we know, seem so wildly Yeah, different. they look so it's drastically like, different, yeah. So it's going to be really hard to try and like, because normally... They like, probably would like, split like, them, but maybe have like shorter... Yeah, or... I'm just not really sure how I'm going to do it yet, to be <laughs> honest with you. Uh, I'll figure something out. I'll cross that bridge uh, when you get there. Yeah, no, exactly. But like, from what we know, episode one is like the the bogeyman and the babies oh, yeah. episode, right? And then episode two, we think, is the Daryl's Court, which is the musical yeah. Jigs Monsoon Beatles episode, which to me sound like wildly different episodes. <laughs> yeah. So to try and stitch those two together from a concept that dinosaur people, thing we see in the trailer looks like it's from episode one as well. I think so. Yeah, we'll get into that in a bit. Uh, we'll go into a little little bit of trailer talk in a bit. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm not as against it. It's the same thing to a certain extent with the season one thing. I know when that was first announced, a lot of people were like, oh, that's silly. It's I know about that. Season. I always understood that. No, I like, know, but like, I, I, I know why people were. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. For like people like like me that like collect DVDs and stuff, you know, it looks a bit weird on the shelf. You're like, oh, yeah. series one, I think season the one. <laughs> I think the trade-off is worth making because... You look at that trailer that's just dropped and mm. the millions of views that it's gotten, I don't think it would have done as well if it was labelled Series 14. No. Because you'd have so many... Because there were a lot of people in those comments that weren't Doctor Who fans. Who this yeah. was probably their first time seeing Doctor Who, if not for a few years, <laughs> maybe the first time. Yeah. And going to a new audience, hey guys, here's our brand new 14th series. The mm -hmm. first question they're going to ask is, oh, blub it heck, that's a bit too much yeah. for me. I don't think I'll bother the second thing they'll ask if they do want to bother is, where's the other 13th series? At which point <laughs> yeah. you have to get to the, the best. And they go down that rabbit hole people... and they're like, damn, where's the previous 26 series? Yeah, and it's like, okay, so if I want to watch the revival <laughs> up to this point, that's still currently with HBO in America. God knows where it is in other countries. I actually don't know. Yeah. Um, you'll have to let us know in the comments. And then obviously with Classic Who, it's Britbox, uh, but then also BritBox might be sort of going away, and it's got sort of merged into ITVX, and it's just a lot of it's a lot of red tape to the rest of the back catalogue for um, international viewers. And I do think is my prediction: as soon as that deal expires with HBO, like next year, I think we will get the new Who rollout on Disney Plus possibly I hope so. next year. As soon as they can do it, I think they'll make. A I think deal it for makes that. sense. Like we have it all. Over here on iPlayer, they have it all on Disney+. Yeah, Plus. definitely. That makes I sense think to that me. makes complete sense to me. And I, I think, from a Disney end, it's like, wow, 13 <laughs> free series of a show that we, you know, we don't have to make, pay any more money towards. You know, from their end, I'd imagine that's quite a quite a bargain, really. Yeah. Um, and I think this whole deal is a relative bargain for them, considering, yes, they are investing money into it, but they're not the ones having to make it. You know what I mean? No. Like they, it's sort of all taken care of in another country by another team. Um, and, you know, some of the funding is also done by other parties as well. Obviously, Bad Wolf being a mainly like Sony like owned thing, and then obviously the BBC as well. So it's probably one of the cheapest investments Disney has made in recent, which isn't saying much considering they'll spaff like billions on studios like it's nothing. Yeah. Um, but it's they're probably looking at it and going, this is quite a cost-effective way of getting a new audience onto Disney Plus without breaking the bank, you know? Um, so, yeah, uh, that was that. Um, but no, in conclusion, it's inconvenient, it's annoying, I'll yeah. get over it, I'll live. Yeah, I'm sure we'll get used to it with time. Yeah, I mean, even if it doesn't work, you can always just swap it back. The, the one people, as yeah. I said, the one group of people I do feel happy for are the Australians who are going to get, like, oh, yeah. a respectable time for the first time ever. And uh, Crispy said, like, oh, it's the first time I've ever gamed Doctor Who on Saturday, which is nice. Like, I can't be mad at that. Yeah. That uh, is but yeah, after that, about a week later, it was actually announced on the Disney Plus account first, we got a trailer. 
What about Quite the brief. Stephen Moffat stuff, buddy? Oh, yeah. See, this is what I'm saying. So much has happened. Yeah, I, I think that actually came thing. before the last thing, but uh, it doesn't matter. It? I think so. You might be right. Well I, well, I don't know, actually, because it had been actually, rumored so prominently. Yeah, that, like, Stephen, Moffat, Stephen Moffat's a weird one for me, because it feels like it was a thing <laughs> long before it actually was a thing. Yeah, like, like, I feel like we've all known about this for years. Yeah, my <laughs> thoughts are... Thumbs up. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm I think it's, I think it's great. Goes. And I'm seeing, um, I saw a lot of people, like, being like, Oh, like, Doctor Who only has two writers, and about right, the old guys. I, I did see that. But the majority of people I saw, even from people who were historically less pop, like keen on Moffat, were like, I'm happy to see him you yeah. know, give it another go. Yeah. So well, I think nice. what you were saying about this being season one, this being people's first impression, it mm. makes sense to bring back the guy who wrote five of the top ten rated stories of all time. Exactly, yeah. I think there's an element of you really need to get a launch right. Yeah. For something this big, you can't afford to just be humble around too, take risks. Yeah, being too like experimental with it. I think that's where series eleven went wrong. And by that I don't yeah. mean I don't mean the concept of being experimental <laughs> was wrong. Because I think series fourteen is being experimental in a number of ways. But I think the experimentation of things with like a writer's room, for example, which was never done at the BBC before at that no. point, as Jibble has said as such. That created a lot of issues for Series 11, and Chibble's gone on record as saying that, like, he had to basically spend a lot of his time rewriting the scripts of the other writers because they'd never written anything like this before. And yeah. so, while I understand the compulsion to want new writers, and I do want more, don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. I am I am with you on that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I yeah. can also understand the aspect of the last time we did a launch like this, they kind of botched it a little bit. <laughs> uh, because the, the audience just didn't retain from it. Um, so I can understand the conviction to be like, okay, we need to make sure people like this one. So I think bringing, as you said, bringing back someone who wrote so like the top five best stories of Doctor yeah. like, Who, some, you know, some of them anyway, back, makes all the sense in the world. And also a lot of people think Moffitt's, some of Moffat's best stories were under Russell as yeah. well. Uh, I like a lot of Moffat stories in his own era. I will, oh, yeah. I will say, yeah. though, I think he does sometimes benefit from having someone else there to ground him a little bit. Mm. I think sometimes he can get a little bit. I think with Moffat, it's ideas. more his it's more his arcs that sort of get mm. a bit lost at times. I think when yeah. he's just penning a story, nine out of ten times writes, usually really he solid. Like a like a solo like <laughs> adventure. Like is it just like a forty five minutes of television <laughs> that's nothing more than that? Peak television. It, yeah, also, it's been also it's been like it's been seven years. Has it? Yeah, people are acting like it was like last week that he was writing yeah. to. But when Moffat last wrote a Doctor Who episode for context, I was I'm twenty now. I'm twenty one in July. <laughs> the last one was Christmas of twenty seventeen. So I would have been I'd be ten in twenty thirteen. I'm terrible at maths. I need forty. Oh, bro, you're a fucking baby. What is this? That's what I'm saying. Like. But like, I remember making that a t- the, the, la- the last time he wrote, you know, Doctor Who Brexit had only just happened. Mm. COVID was still three years away. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it hasn't been that. Yeah, you know, when you put it into perspective. It's not that recent, <laughs> you know? Um, and again, it's not like he's writing, you know, reams and reams. It's like, I could see it being a similar arrangement to what we had RTD one wise, where it's like, I could see him doing one a year or something. It would, I yeah, and I would that. be all for that. Like, he's a yeah. peak writer. Yeah, no, exactly. Gotta keep and the I, goats I think, around. I think, I do find this idea weird that, like, some people seem to have that because, like, a writer's, like, done it before, that means that we can't use them. I, I think it's weird. Like, obviously, I get wanting new writers. The thing but, is, like, it, like, new writer sounds good can... on paper, but a lot of people forget that even series one of the revival, brought back people that wrote for, like, the expanded media, and those writers, like, their stories are arguably some of the best, like, stories of the show. Mm. Stuff like Father's Day and Dalek. Like, a dirty word. (laughs) I think you can do both. I think you can have a balance of your Russells, your Stevens, your Paul Cornells, your, Mm. um, 
if you want to go for more recent Doctor Who history, Sarah Dollard's or <laughs> Jamie Matheson's, etc., etc., etc. But then you can also have your new writers um, come on board and do things. The thing is, we uh, have new writers as well. Like, it's not like this is just a purely returning. And I agree. I think there should be more, but I think there will yeah, be I with think, season yeah. two. I think Russell has even said four of the scripts for next year aren't written by him. Yeah. So that's half the series that's you know definitely not written by him. So that's four slots for Which you is know, good. writers. Maybe yeah. If we assume one's taken up by Moffat, that's still three slots for yeah. other people, which is still quite a bit uh, when when you consider a series of eight episodes. So, yeah, I'm on board for it. I'm keen for it. Um, it looks like he's doing the high-concept <laughs> sci-fi one, which is some of yeah. Moffat's best work. So I'm, I'm very interested to see what he cooks up. Um, I think those two together create magic. And w- I think that leaves us nicely on to the trailer, doesn't it? Unless there is yeah. anything else like this. No, I don't have much more to say um, than that. No, like, so that leads us on to the trailer. So can we talk a bit for a second about just how weird it was, the way the trailer came out? Because, like, it well, came the thing out is, so right, oddly. I, I found it early, like, it leaked early. Um, and obviously I, I, me- I messaged you. <laughs> Because I just yeah, saw someone yeah. respond to it on, like, a tweet, and I was like, fuck, i got to get my reaction out. It's not even dropped yet. I was like, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> no, literally. And uh, you sent it to me, and I was like, wait, what? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, like, it was unlisted on Disney first. Yeah, uh, I thought it was bait at first. Like, I didn't think it was a real trailer, and I went on it, and yeah. I was like, fuck, this is, like, a two-minute. Yeah, this is just, definitely real, yeah. Just banger. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And, like, so, like, I think... Um, it went on Disney Unlisted, and then it it went public about 45 minutes later-ish, I want to yeah. say. Half hour, 45 minutes later, something like that. And then the BBC's then was delayed the by, like... The BBC's was an hour after that. Yeah. Um, my assumption for that, and I said this in my video time, was... My assumption is, obviously, they announced that Kate Middleton had cancer, had been diagnosed with cancer... Mm. Um, and for those of you who don't know, like the BBC is being our official public service broadcaster. They have like the Royal Charter. They're the official channel of the Royal family. So I'm assuming they had to clear their socials for that is hmm. my guess, which is why the official BBC accounts didn't post anything until about what, like half six. So half yeah, an hour that, after like that. that announcement was dropped. That's my guess. I could be wrong, but. It's the most plausible I think reason it why up, they didn't drop it has happened in the past. Yeah, it's the most plausible reason to me is why they... Um, it's, like, the most plausible reason to me is, like, why why that happened. Uh, but the trailer came out, and, uh, yeah, I think... I, we've, we've had this discussion privately. I one think of it's the one, best trailers in one years. One of the best trailers in recent years. Yeah, no, definitely, yeah. I think. It's right up there with some of my favorites. Um, even if, oh. if we're just talking, you know, even if we're just talking about like the trailers of that style, mm-hmm. um, I think it's better than probably all of Jodie's. Yeah, definitely better than most of the series ten ones. I think this is even as good as the sexiest one was. This has me far more hyped. Yeah, that's, it's got a different <laughs> flavor to it, doesn't yeah. it? There's something. I think the thing was. I think what I've I was hyped for the 60th, right? I, I oh, very yeah. much was. I don't want to, like, you know, c- come back and say... I think the nah, difference is, though, is with the 60th, we, we all kind of knew what we were in for. Like, it's yeah. Tenen, it's Catherine I Tate. think there was an element of, it's like, it's a surefire hit, in a sense. Mm-hmm. It's like, you've got all the agree- ingredients there that, like, you kind of know. So, like... Yeah. You kind of know what you're going to get to. You're going to have Not to start with the wild blue yonder. Your... I feel like everything is a bit formulaic in the sense of you've yeah. got your like fun sort of Russell opener and you have your yeah. big bombastic epic finale. Yeah. Dude, yeah. No, definitely. Like, and I think what was refreshing about this because I saw a lot. I saw. I say a lot. I saw a couple of people still moaning about it, feeling like 2008. I fundamentally do not get that uh, no. at all from this trailer. It feels very much like its own thing. There's been another conversation of whether it's too Disney-esque. Um, I don't get that. Not, like, I'm not feeling it at the minute. I do yeah. get the jokes with like Avengers Tower and it oh, actually yeah. having a yeah. budget now and stuff like that and being like, I see what you're doing there. <laughs> but beyond that, 
it still feels like Doctor Who, but it still feels yeah, it's like the heart was still there. Yeah, and like visually, yeah, yeah. it looks fantastic. Yeah, all the other weird conversion the grading thing. problem yeah. that they had. Which, to be honest, I didn't notice until people started pointing it out. But that's because I'm I'm not into that sort of thing, you know. I, <laughs> yeah, I I I'm not. I only really noticed it on the dinosaur really. scene. It just looked a little bit washed out. Um, but uh, yeah, apparently that yeah. was just a problem with the uh, technical stuff converting. Yeah, apparently, it, so. the Disney Plus it looks good. Yeah, has the better colors from like the HDR version. Mm-hmm. But um. I'm sure we'll see that released properly at some yeah. point, or maybe for a future trailer, because Russell did say they'll do more. Uh, it'll be in the standard colour correction. But in any case, um, other I thought than it that, looked like great. Saying, I thought the yeah, effects you know, looked, looked pretty solid. Like I loved all the different yeah, locations. Yeah, I was saying the CGI oh, looked bad. Like, were we looking at the same thing? That TARDIS shot looked incredible. Like, yeah, I know. yeah. I, and like yeah. the stuff with Jinx Monsoon, like the music notes, like the music the notes dolphin Ruby, Ruby. look really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think visually it looks great. And I, I, a lot of the comments were, "It's kind of weird seeing Doctor Who with like the Star Wars level." <laughs> and whilst maybe it's not quite there, it's not far off. I mean, you know, yeah, but the shot... thing is, right, <clears throat> Doctor Who's never been known for its like no. special effects. The thing is. That's it's only nice now is that Doctor Who's at that level where it now can. It's it's nice compete. that you can put it next to something like the Mandalorian and it doesn't look yeah. out of place. Whereas, like, even when they were trying to make it fit for the Netflix generation, which was a big <laughs> thing for the Chibnall era, you can still sort of look at it and go, "I can tell one's a BBC show." You know what I'm yeah. saying? I can tell one's a BBC show with like a, a quarter of the budget. And it does look a bit pants, with this. You, you compare some of the planet shots in this to, like, the Star Wars shows, they look about on par to me. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and some of the spaceship shots look about same level. Uh, and that is a nice thing to feel. But beyond that, like, I thought the trailer was fantastic. I think the choice of ch 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 change is... Oh, yeah. Changes, the way that was mixed was through great. as well. It was and so good. It immediately made me think of Shrek <laughs> because of the fact that it's used in that which everyone said that made them feel really old, that that's how I know that song, but there we are. Um, but yeah, no, it fit really well. I thought that that song conveyed multiple, like, things, because, like, obviously you've got the idea of time and changing time, but also mm-hmm. the reappearing lyric of changes kind of sort of well, insinuates... Because about change, ooh! With, with that, yeah, it's like, it's, it's sort of showing that, like, this is a changed show, this is a new era. Yeah. It's sort of similar to how that glorious song in series 11 has the mm. lyrics I feel glorious, glorious got a chance to start again. This is the first it's, time I think Doctor Who, Doctor Who have used like a popular song within like a trailer and it's actually worked. Yeah, and also, I mean, I can't imagine the licensing for a David Bowie song is cheap, right? So, I mean, no, like that, I, even I, think I, like... I think I saw on Review of Death, like, apparently this will, this will never get released or something because of that. So it will never oh, feature right. as part of, like, a box set or anything. This will be the only uh, version because of that. Damn. I wonder if they could, they could release it on a Blu-ray and just put a different backing track on it. I guess, <laughs> yeah. I have to actually see edits of people uh, change the music. I thought the music worked really well, though. I did. Uh, I really liked it. I, my main <laughs> takeaway is, so far, this because I've discussed the trailer at length mm-hmm. multiple times at this stage. I, I've watched it countless times. <laughs> Same. Uh, so I feel like I'm repeating myself. But the, the main takeaways I have is I love the more mystical, cosmic direction. Mm-hmm. I think it's something fresh. Again, very much, in my view, distinguishes it from RTD1 which was relatively grounded by Doctor Who standards and focused a lot more on Earth-based yeah. stuff, at least initially. Um, and kind of was like, even when it did sci-fi stuff, it had like a mm. sort of vaguely understandable yeah. human explanation for it, right? Like, so an example I used was Cassandra, right? Cassandra is a flap of skin, but the idea is that she's been someone who's been like, you know, manipulated by yeah. cosmetic surgeries and stuff like that. And you can like, you can understand how that can happen. Right, something like the toy maker, bro, just exists. There isn't. I mean, yeah, they even have the line in the like, trailer about things becoming more supernatural. Yes, which been yeah. cool. Like, I yeah. really like that they're making a conscious effort to have that be part of like the universe. I think that's a quite a natural thing to do and quite an interesting thing to do. And it also it allows you to sidestep one thing that does annoy me. I don't think I've mentioned this anywhere else. Where you know how every few years they like the humans and everyone else just forgets that aliens exist. Yeah. <laughs> 
I think the good thing about this is you don't have to make them forget aliens exist because these aren't aliens. They're mm. just weird. Like they're, <laughs> they're a different level beyond alien. You know what I'm yeah. saying? They're like mystical god entities, which is like another level up, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think it sidesteps that issue quite nicely. I don't really think that um, humanity can forget uh, aliens now with the massive unit tower in the middle of London. <laughs> That's another thing. Is I am wondering how they're gonna they're gonna deal with that, like, because I, I remember seeing filming of like season two where there's like unit protests. So okay. I am curious about like where that's going and where units going. But anyway, mm. um, what else was I gonna say? Obviously, we know uh, Yasmin Finney uh, is back. I'm curious to see how they're gonna tie that in. I yeah. hope. I hope they get the balance right of, yes, you can reference the past, just don't go too heavy. I think you yeah. can get it right. I think it can work. Uh, because, like, with Mal, I think you can just say she travelled with the Doctor before, and that's all the explanation you really need. Yeah, I don't yeah. think you need much more than that. And they I sort think of, the of done a little bit of the short. leg room with the 60th. Yeah, but even no. if you've not seen the 60th, I feel like it doesn't take many lines no, to be like, no. she's basically what Ruby was, but Long time yeah. ago, you know, it makes sense to an audience. Same characters like Kate as well. It's like, yeah, you know, Finney does come with more baggage because, yeah, of because it's sort of hard talking. not to address the elephant in the room. Like, so there's Donna, and yeah, the so doctor. I, I'm hoping that they, they they manage to deal with that, you know, in a way that doesn't confuse people. I'm hoping. Mm-hmm. Beyond that, though, this looks like the perfect fresh start. It looks fun. The humour feels different to me as well. That was something I noticed. The the butterfly effect joke. That's the sort of gag that I'm not used to Doctor Who making, like sort of the quick cutaway <laughs> gag. Which is what I'm expecting it to be. I'm not expecting the butterfly. Oh yeah, to yeah. I feel like it might really even be like a pre titles. We do yes. that. And yeah. then that obvious establishes the rules of time travel going forward. I did see I, I want to reiterate it because I was obviously on who's that one of their callers because they have a, like a call in section suggested yeah. the idea that the butterfly effect could become real due to other myths becoming real because Ooh. the butterfly effect is a myth. Mm. So that's why the butterfly effects never come into effect before, which I kind of like as a little ex- yeah. as a little in universe explanation if you care about that stuff. I think, I think cool. I just looked at it and went, "Oh, time travel joke, fun." But yeah. if you want an explanation, there you go. Um, but yeah, no, I thought that joke was fun. I, um, I will be curious how they resolve that, though. Like, because yes, obviously um, it, it probably is just going to be like a two-minute thing. Like, how are they going to undo Ruby being this lizard woman? Yeah, definitely. I like the fact that we're going back to the family angle. Uh, I like yeah. that. I like that Carla's on board with Ruby traveling, but she's also, you know, she. She can see it's a good thing for Ruby to do, but she's also still like, you've got to make sure she's all right. I mean, yeah, but she's a mother. Do she care? It's, but it's like it's interesting because every um, every family always reacts to it differently. Obviously, Jack is mm-hmm. like, why did you kidnap my daughter? <laughs> yeah. Donna Donna's mum doesn't really care, but Wilf is like overjoyed by it. He's like, go out and see the universe. But then yeah. Francine. She's like obviously got like conspiracies, and she's like you know she's got people whispering in her ear to do with sex and stuff. She's a lot more skeptical. Oh yeah, this seems to be like she's fine with it, but she's got some stipulations which I like as a dynamic. I think that makes sense and feels mm-hmm. natural. Um, and I like that we are returning to the Sundays as a main fixture because I really like them in church. I think they're probably like yeah. the highlights of church. Cherry Sunday is an icon. <laughs> I can't wait uh, to see more character stuff with them going definitely, forward. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, there's that one shot everyone would go mad over with David Tennant <laughs> as a hologram. My guess with that is that it's probably just the eleventh hour thing of here's all the doctors that existed before. Yeah, exactly. It's a way to communicate to the audience of the show has been going on for a while without you know just dumping a little yeah. more. And I know them. people will say, "Oh, but why use Tennant?" That is just marketing. That is it's just, just yeah. It's just trailer bait. Like you're the exact reason you're reacting like this is exactly why they did it. Yeah, it's got people because speaking. It's David Tennant. And people yeah. love David Tennant. You know, it's just it's just how it goes. <laughs> how you play the game. You know, why do you think that like whenever a new Star Wars thing comes out, the original trilogy is always the basis. You know, yeah. whenever any like new Star Wars show comes out, it's always 
either slightly after or before or in the middle of the original trilogy, because that's mm. what people like and know. Yeah. And it's no different with this. Like, why is David Tennant at the Doctor for the 60th? Because that's what most of the general public like and know. If it was the 70s, you'd have Tom Baker yeah. in the 80s, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I don't think there's anything more to it than that. I think it could well be the case that Jonathan Groff is a time agent. That's my personal guess. Yeah, uh, everyone. I've seen a few people please. like speculate that he's Jack, and I don't get that at all. I don't think he that's is. That's one. That's personally. one way to completely isolate the new audience that you've just brought on board. Yeah, I don't. I don't see it, and I don't want yeah. it to be either. Yeah, no. I do, I do think that obviously, you know, whilst I'm not advocating Barryman come back, I think that character is too intrinsically tied to Barryman. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I think as well, it would just be a headache for Bad Wolf. <laughs> uh, not only from certain fans who are like, where's John Barrowman, but also John Barrowman himself. I don't think there's uh, much more you can do with the character as well, either. I feel like his, like... The only thing I think's a bit sad is you're not going to get him interacting with 15, because I do think there would be a fun dynamic there. But mm. it's... I don't think it's worth a recast just to no. do that. You know, I feel like just leave Jack and just have it be another time agent. That's yeah. better for world building anyway. Like, you know, <laughs> just to imply that there isn't just one time agent. Um, yeah, I agree with that. So, like, but I think he is a time agent. Uh, any other, I'm trying to think if I got any other major theories. Um, obviously Not think regarding him. Is episode one. So I'm assuming baby is bogeyman. Maybe the bogeyman's giving them nightmares. Yeah, Maybe I can see something that. I can like see that. that. Yeah. Have you ever seen uh, Rise of the Guardians? That movie that was like, uh, it's like Santa Claus and the Easter Buddy and Jack Frost. I, oh, uh, I know what film you're on about. I've not seen it, so. Yeah, that's got like <laughs> the. I don't think he's called the Bogeyman. He's called like <laughs> something else. But like, he's basically. That's the idea of that film, is he's corrupting all the kids' dreams and making mm. them really like. I mean, yeah, that's sort of the Bogeyman's like whole shtick. Yeah, yeah. So that's my guess for that. Um, we don't see much from the middle of the series, from what I understand. It's very, like, first two episodes yeah. and the final two episodes, because we know Yeah, because there's not much... Jacket, there's not really anything at all from, like, episode five, like, the Albion stuff, like, the slug. Yeah. Like, we, we see that, that one like, shot of that woman that I think we saw yeah. in our lamppost, but that was about it. Because we know that the leather jacket and cargo <laughs> combo is the, fi- the finale. Yeah. Uh, or at least, like, you know, part one, at the very least. Of the finale, um, so yeah, like they've they've done a very good job, I think, of showing plenty to get excited over, but not showing too much. I feel I really like there hope, is balance. I really hope that this series is all original. Like, I know you, you're still convinced that the Daleks yeah, are coming I'm, back. I, I don't, don't know whether I am. I've kind of changed my tune on that. I think, like, I thought that, but then I looked at the trailer and I thought, I think it might just be one-off new villains, which I'm honestly kind of game for. I yeah. would like it personally. If they're going to do the Daleks, have them built up to. And maybe yeah, have them be the, end yeah. of, the end of season two or something. Have them be like, have them be a big deal again, rather than yeah. just, oh, it's been, that's it's why been I thought, That's why I thought holding off the Daleks for a little bit with Shuri <clears throat> would work a lot better. Because having them like, because we only have eight episodes. Like, this season. So for him to meet the Daleks and then meet the Daleks again would be a bit dead. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Especially I, coming I, off I the back of, like, Hitler wasn't that long ago, like... Obviously, you've got to have him meet the Daleks in some stage. It's kind of like, you've got I mean, to yeah, do it as, like, a rite of passage. But uh, I agree with you. I think it doesn't need to happen right away. Yeah, You know, I think you that. can build... I think you can build up to it. I mean, we There's... had that comic announcement of the Cyberman comic... So that rules out at least the Cybermen for it is what it is. <laughs> I actually had a comment from a guy who did the cover on one of my videos, which is pretty cool. Oh, nice. He said, oh, I made the cover for that. I was like, that's a great cover. <laughs> Wonderful cover. I love it. Um, so I think that pretty much rules out a Cyberman story with the gap were in season one. Yeah. Because uh, normally, like, obviously, the, the ancillary media is going to tie in to what, you know, the show's going to do. So if the show's going to do the Cybermen, I highly doubt <laughs> the comics would be doing the Cybermen for, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Grand City New Pipses, right? So we can pretty much rule them out. Um, that is interesting. That is interesting, though, because I don't think they would do the Daleks and Cybermen in the same series. 
Uh, no, I don't. Only either. being eight episodes. But I'm just saying. It, I'm just saying it rules them out. You know. Yeah. No. 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 But no, what, I'm, no, what no. I'm thinking though is like we probably won't see the Cybermen now until like his third or fourth series. Yeah, maybe. Which, on the one hand, I'm kind of glad of. On the I'm other, gonna, I'm kind of glad really for it. Want, like, on the I, one I'm... hand, I am. But on the other, I really want a good Cyberman story. I am as well, it's yeah. It's been so long since we had one that wasn't, hey, <laughs> guys, it's the Master and his sidekicks, the Cyberman. Like, I think we just need a break from the main three for a bit, and arguably yeah. I just wouldn't bring the Master back at all. Like, Just get I'm them out of the picture you. for a I've while. I've said this. I've said this yeah. for a while. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Look, I, I think that they did great, but move on. Uh, yeah. There are so if many other interesting Rani, characters you that you want can to do as well. If you want to find a way to do Rani, go for it. Um, that was another thing, actually, uh, I have mentioned before. Someone pointed out on the unit screens, there's like S triad. You know, triad oh, yeah, technologies yeah. and stuff. And uh, like S triad, if you rearrange the words, it's TARDIS. TARDIS. So people are wondering... What's the deal with that? That's cool. Um, and the speculation, obviously, with like the Susan Twist character being involved with all of the triads. Yeah, there's stuff. a bunch of Twist characters, isn't there? The Susan Twist, obviously. I am. Ho- I am slightly worried about that. I will be. Le- I will level with you. I am slightly worried <laughs> about there being too much to keep track of. Um, yeah. That is something that does worry me to an extent, but at the same time, I guess. It depends though, because I feel like maybe maybe they'll just be slow background burners though, like maybe like Volt Saxon or whatever, where it's like if you yeah. notice, you notice until the moment when it actually yeah. becomes relevant, and then you know flashback yeah. to like, whoa, that's crazy. No, no, definitely. <laughs> like, I just hope that they don't, uh, you know, too many cooks spoil the broth. Yeah, so to yeah. Speak. I hope they don't like overdo it. And then, like, people were like, oh, but what's going on? Because I kind of feel like that's where, you know, the Moffat era started to go wrong a bit with the casual mm. audiences. Series 6 had all this stuff going on, and they were like, whoa, what's going yeah. on? <laughs> uh, so I hope they don't do that. I, I don't think they will, but I think it is worth bearing that in mind, you know, that you've got to keep it accessible. Yeah, um, I was just trying to think if there's anything else. I've watched the trailer so many times. Uh, I love. I actually really like his opening line. I know some people really don't like it. They give me the loving. I really dig. It's just so his doctor as well. I really dig his doctor just in general. There's a sense of um, wildness and charm mm-hmm. that I really, uh, I really like. Um, whilst also you can tell that there's still that weight there. But uh, he's a refreshed man as well. There's like a good mix. Yeah. Uh, here's a question for you, actually. Mm-hmm. How much do you think the Beatles are actually going to factor into the, the musical episode? Good question. Um, you see, the more that I've thought about it, I don't think they'll be too prevalent. Um, yeah. I think they might... Maybe about like 15, 10 minutes of the episode. I don't know. I, I feel like they'll I be there to like... Establish that shit's going on here. I don't. I think they'll be I... put out of the picture pretty early on. Yeah, I don't know where I heard it, but I heard like oh, so I saw it on Twitter. I think the theory that like the Beatles were going to get trapped inside their instruments. Yeah, which I I really like that as a as a little theory. I think that'd be fun. <laughs> uh, Time has changed because the Beatles can make music. I, 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 like, the idea the that, I like the idea that because like, I like the idea that. that London is just an apocalypse because the Beatles didn't exist. Yeah, it's the sort of I think, thing. I think if it, they do go down that route, that also gives um, more justification to the butterfly effect thing. Yes. Like one thing being like changed has altered. And I guess in that case, it's a good idea it's to true. establish it in episode one as well because it's like a direct. Yeah. Like you know, you get an example of it in episode one, and then episode two, it's like the crux of the sto- the plot, right? <laughs> so um, that's a good idea. You know, making sure that the audience are, you know, on the same page. It was very Pirates of Mars, seeing Destroyed <laughs> London. It was reminding me of that a lot. Uh, you know, when Sutek takes over um, and they have to go back and stop him. So that was cool. Uh, I like the visual of Destroyed London. I saw someone say that the, the geography of London was off. I couldn't <laughs> care less. Yeah, uh, like Tower Bridge is too cool. So. It's like, it's, it's a sci fi show, man. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, um, what else? Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. I like the shots of the different Ruby. Ruby in different, what looks to be different points in time. 
and you get the ch ch, -ch changes as she, Oh, yeah, like, goes yeah. No, the, the trailer was really well edited, I thought. Yes. The music. Uh, so I'm wondering what's going on there. <laughs> Dead TARDIS? That shot. I love that shot. That shot I is beautiful. I love that shot. Yeah, I might make that a wallpaper, actually. I really <laughs> do like it. I don't blame uh, you. Do you, have any, do you have any theories for that? I mean, the, the main thing I've seen is people uh, talking about the, the Wobbly Yonder speech from 14. Yeah, I've seen people say that it's 14 starters. I don't think it will be. Like, I think, I we're, sort think of, so. we're leaving that now. Like, we're moving away from that. Like, we're focusing on 15. Um, yes. But then again, I don't know, because I know that Russell has also said there's going to be something to do with the TARDIS that does say that yeah, and you also know, 15 there was TARDIS is the main TARDIS. Thing where he said that the Vortex was getting more violent as well. Mm. Uh, so I think it could tie in with that. Um, and I don't know, maybe maybe the TARDIS is affected by these myths as well in, in yeah. some sort of way. Um, like, I don't know, I'm seated think... regardless. Definitely. I, I like that the TARDIS has been put more of a focus on uh, this go-around. Because, like, it mm. seems, from the moment this trailer starts, you get multiple shots of the TARDIS, and they make a very big point of... It doesn't land in the conventional <laughs> way. That's something that I think is worth pointing out. Of course, at first I thought that was just a stylistic choice, right? Of just, oh, it's just fun yeah, to I love watch. how it just like, slides into unit headquarters, it crashes yeah. through, like, <laughs> Ruby's roof. Yeah, and like at first I thought, oh, that's just for a bit of spectacle, right? But then I thought on it more, and I'm like, maybe that is part <laughs> of the problem. The TARDIS isn't landing normally. Mm. Something is wrong with it beyond what we know. So I think that could be a little subtle hint. There. We have to make a joke um, about like is there Ruby's shot like, as well? Flat, that... right? About yeah, them, like, is... having just fixed a roof or something. Yeah, and retiling it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Imagine, like, yeah, they're just getting it fixed up again, <laughs> yeah. like the, con the builders are in, and then it just gets crashed through again. <laughs> That'd be great. Um, then we do get a shot as well of the unit scanning the TARDIS, right? Mm. So maybe they're aware of it as well, and maybe it ties into this universal event. Very flux, actually, when you get the like, sand the storm and like, yeah. the planets all covered in the sand. Um, be weird if, like, the rest of the universe just got wiped out. <laughs> the screen just <laughs> Goes to black. The show's over. No more Doctor Who. Uh, yeah, I'm very curious because there is that shot of Shooty looking genuinely like horrified, looking out into space. Mm -hmm. So uh, does it look like he's going to be without trauma for very long? I do hope that they don't do angst again. I am a bit over. No, oh, but the, 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 the no. I think. I think we keep him the way he is this series. I would like to see him get pushed. I would like to see this Doctor like break at some point. Yes. I think that would be the perfect time to do your Dalek I don't episode. Need, I don't need angsty Doctor. I think no, there's a difference no. between an angry Doctor and an angsty Doctor. Yeah, true, doctor. Yeah, yeah. I think those are two different things. I yeah. think you can have Shooty be angry. I don't need oh, the planets are gone. The Gallifrey <laughs> oh, yeah. is gone. Uh, yeah, I'm not who I thought I was. I don't need that. Yeah, but we don't need the press. We've, we've done it so many times. It works, but we've seen it. You know, mm -hmm. like, do something else. Uh, I think an angry doctor who's like more reckless is more interesting anyway, personally, yeah. than, than a depressed doctor at this stage. We've <laughs> only seen glimpses of that with like the Time War Victorious and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. yeah, and I guess like Hellbent as well, to a degree. Uh, so, yeah. But I think that's about it in terms of the trailer. If there's anything else you wanted to point out, I no, think I yeah, most overall, it's just a very solid trailer. Um, it's got me hyped Definitely. on the job. Very visually stunning. Um, I'm glad it was a that. substantial trailer. I'm glad they didn't do like a minute. But now, buddy, it's quick fire question time. Oh, we got questions. Okay, I asked questions on the Twitter like a month ago. Um, okay. Well, let's just sort of fire through them. We won't spend too long on them. We'll just shoot through them. Sure thing. Um, what is your favourite memory watching Doctor Who theories? Oh, good question. Oh, that's a difficult one to answer. Do you have that an is, obvious that is one? to be like put on the spot <laughs> like that. Yeah. Do you have an obvious one for you? I think for me, it was probably watching the series three finale. Because I remember finale? watching that as a kid and being like, fuck. Like, Sorry, which finale? It cut off as you oh, said. Oh, the series, series 3 finale. Series 3 finale, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it was watching that's Utopia, that. seeing that reveal. Be like, mm. shit. Mine's just following be that. 
quite boring, but I'm going to say watching the 50th on the night. It's was... weird. I have no recollection of watching the 50th when it uh, yeah, I broadcast. Do. I remember being sad that we couldn't go to the cinema for whatever reason, but um, oh. just like watching that was like an incredible experience. Like seeing okay. like Tom Baker pop up at the end, uh, no serial 13. Like that was peak childhood memory <laughs> for me. Um, oh, I, I get why. And like there was just like constant Doctor Who stuff going on. I remember I had to record like six different programs because <laughs> they were all like Doctor Who related things. So I had like a I was with Virgin at the time the, like the, one of the Virgin Media boxes things. Uh, so I had to record like Adventure in Space and Time and uh, Doctor Who Live the Next Doctor and uh, oh, yeah, The After that. Party which was terrible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I only watched it recently the, like the other year. But yeah, it was awful. Yeah. And, like, um, all these things, like, it, it was just constant wall-to-wall Doctor Who, and it felt like Christmas for me as a kid. So, um, yeah. I think that would be mine. Yeah. Okay. Would you rather have a Dalek plunger for a hand, or a Cyberman headpiece, uh, like the handles for ears? The handles, right? Yeah. I probably, handles, yeah. Because, like, I, I can, imagine can I can still pick fun- up frequencies and stuff, yeah. right? Like, I don't yeah. know if it's like you just can't hear. It's what are you going to do with the plunger, realist? What are you going to do with the plunger? Yeah, this is a bit dead. I'm like, okay. Like, I need my hands. Pr- try and eat with a plunger, like. <laughs> oh, it's not the way. Sure you could be like a whole bowl. You could, yeah. yeah. That'd be a bit grim. That'd be, I, don't, I don't think I'd like it. Yeah, but definitely the handles, for sure. Yeah, Easy. Okay. Easy. Would you rather have Bill X-12 for one more series, or another Eccleston Paper series? Okay, so twelve and Bell. Oh, one. that's 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 rough. Because mm. like, I think there's more potential in the second Capaldi and Bell series. Yeah, the, the thing is, I'm gonna the thing is, I'm going to say that, and that's only because I think series one is perfect as it is. I think if we had got that second series and that B series two, I don't think I'd like. Yeah, the um, idea of I don't think I'd hold their like pairing as high as they do because that is like the perfect story arc for them. The idea of like Eccleston New Earth kind of unsettles me. (laughs) Can you imagine them lying on the grass and then being just oh, just just being like, like, oh, he's a a little bit foxy. Like, (laughs) I kind of want to see that. I don't. I don't. It would be awful. It would be horrible. I think I would say another twelve mil series because I think. Moffat had really nailed the formula by that point, and then he mm-hmm. left. So uh, I've always thought it would have been great to have one more with that whole setup, like twelve bill, have Noddle maybe there. I'm not a big Noddle guy. I know some people really love Noddle. I'm like, yeah. I'm indifferent. I think I'm he's fine. He does what he's supposed to. I just don't get like the hype. Some people are like he's the best thing since sliced yeah. bread. I'm like, just some guy, bro. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what's okay, the next one? Yeah, we've got two left. Um. Okay. If you were allowed, to, yeah. If you were allowed to change one thing from the sixtieth year, what would it be? Could be something from the app marketing, anything. Okay. I don't think I'd change the episodes we got much because I know some people would say I'd take Wildly Yonder and I put the other Doctors in it. <laughs> I would consider that as a joke. That. Um, I reckon I would. I would make the resolution to. The Star Beast, a little less clunky. I'd maybe remove certain lines about like. I mean, you gotta, pick, time you gotta pick one. You gotta pick one yeah. thing that you change. Ooh, do, 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 See, do. my thinking is, if it's on the table, more tales of the Tardis is with a couple of the new Who ones. Because that yeah. way, that way, you don't have anyone saying, "Well, Tardis is just being celebrated." Because then you can have like a Matt and Karen tales of I the th- Tardis. I, th- I still think we're gonna get that, so. I think we will, but I think it would have just made life a lot more peaceful if yeah. <laughs> some of the other Doctors had it in Tales of the Tardis. So you couldn't go, well, see, there's this. You've got mm. this. You've got something. Everyone's been represented. Sure, Tennant's the main attraction, but that's because he's the main favourite of the public. But if your favourite is Capaldi or Smith, you've got this. I think that would be the one thing I would add, because I don't think... The sixty specials as they exist would necessarily be improved. I think. I think the only thing I would remove is the clunk of the letting it go thing, and I think I'd keep it be mm. just the passing down the inheritance of the meta crisis. That's fine. I agree with that. I agree with. That. I, do agree I think with it would just change. be a bit, a bit more of a solid package. 
I guess it just wouldn't be the only... If I could only make one, like, yeah. it would be sort of, like, more Tales of the Tardis with the new Who Doctors. But, like, I think that's fair. If I would also... Yeah. One other thing, if we're talking changes to the 60th, I would say I'd like it if the toy maker was responsible for some of the little things, just, like, the clothes changing and stuff like that. I think it would just make it a bit tighter, you know? If the toy okay. maker was responsible for that sort of stuff, uh, personally. But, yeah. Yeah. So that's my answer to that. Okay, and ending it off, we have Would you rather have a massive adult Slothene inside you or that fat twat kid Slothene? <laughs> From Sarah Jane Adventures, I assume. That is a question. <laughs> that is a question to end the pod. Uh, <laughs> what does it mean? Does it mean my body or like Yeah, does it mean sexually? Does it mean like stripping my skin? I mean for the first first of all, you know, I don't want the kids Slothene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not that yeah. way. Yeah. So I don't think it is. I think it would literally just be yeah, skin suit. We would be the Slovene. In which case, yeah, <laughs> I feel like the kid makes more sense for me at least. I don't know about you because you're taller. What? Than me. Because you're a child, fairy. Well, no, yeah, but, but I, I wouldn't like want short. that little. I wouldn't want that I'm little fucking like... Sarah Jane Adventures arsehole running around my skin. Yeah, but I'm like short <laughs> and stouty. You're like quite tall, so I feel like it makes sense for you to have the tall Slovene. Yeah, me, I guess. Well, to be I'm fair, they play the Sarah Jane things now, so I guess it would fit me. Like the True. compression thing. I um, think I'd go for the kids with the. Funny <laughs> enough, they've actually got the look. The co- like, yeah, you put your little Slithine family. Father, son, Father Sunday. Over there. Talk to me or my son uh, again. <laughs> yeah, so that's my answer to that. <laughs> uh, if you're asking sexually, then obviously the adult one. And that's uh, it. And that was question corner. If you want to ask more <laughs> questions, you can. We may or may not uh, answer uh, them depending on the quality. Wonderful <laughs> question. Uh, yeah. Love- Love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah, do you want to wrap this up? Thanks for watching Wild Endeavor, the episode three. Next episode will probably be in about five years. No, uh, we'll probably do an episode, I assume, maybe. I mean, I, if there's a second trailer, we'll definitely be talking. Uh, about. You know, we're watching class theories. So we're going to watch class. We've said it now, it's official. We're going to watch class. Let's go. Sorry, doesn't seen class. We're going to do a class episode. See you, everyone. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs>